steps, we give you praise for the glorious week you gave us and blessed us with. This morning, oh God, the gathering is unto you. I pray that you bless us, preach to us. We want to hear your voice, the voice of our shepherd. Have mercy, oh God, upon this flesh, oh God. Crucify this flesh, oh God, and hide me behind the cross of Jesus. Fill me with your spirit like never before. Use me, Lord, to bless all of our lives today. Empower us. Grant unto me boldness. Grant unto me utterance. That I may be able to open my mouth boldly to declare the mysteries of the gospel. In the name of Jesus, let the word bring healing today. Let the word bring deliverance today. In Jesus' mighty name, I bind any work of the devil. I stop any activity of the evil one. And I sprinkle the blood of Jesus upon all we do. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray with thanksgiving. Everybody shout a big amen. amen. Shall I be seated? All right. Psalm 119 verse uh, 92. Psalm 119 verse 92. Psalm 119 verse 92 says, Unless the word of God had been my delight, I should have perished in my affliction. So the psalmist here says that when he went through affliction, he went through a difficult time. It was the word of God that kept him from perishing. In the time of affliction, in that difficult time that he was going through, he said the word of God was his delight. And any time you delight in the word of God, it becomes a shield around you. It becomes a rock upon which you can stand. So he says, unless thy law had been my delight, I should have perished in my affliction. And that is why come every Sunday, we hear the word of God. All the time when we gather in church, the word of God must come. Because the word of God is the only thing that can insulate you from any problem or from any trial of life or from any storm that the devil may send against you. And so our delights must be in the law of the Lord. And in that law must we meditate day and night. In the difficult time, who gives you advice? Who gives you counsel? Let the word of God be there for you. Hallelujah. So this morning, as the word of God is about to come, open up your spirit. Let your mind be attentive. Let your heart be receptive. And let your ear be a listening ear. And allow the word of God to work on you. This month, my key text is going to be from Psalm 34. Psalm 34. We'll read the whole chapter, but I'll preach from just a few verses. Um, that will be my uh, focus throughout the month. It says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Then he said, Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. Don't sleep. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. Verse 4 says, I sought the Lord and he heard me. And he delivered me from all my fears. This was David when he went, I mean, into, I mean, um, one, one of the Philistines, you know, how, how palaces. And as he went there, and he was going to seek refuge, as he was there, trying to hide, the king had received him. And um, he was trying to make himself comfortable. Some people in the palace began to confess and tell the king that, is it this David who killed Goliath that you are housing in your palace freely like that? This guy was so strong, a defeater, who has defeated us several times and has fought us many times. He's the one you are keeping here. And David, when he heard them speaking, knew that his life was about to end. So he pretended he was mad and saliva started dripping from his lips. And the king said, I mean, how can I keep this madman in my palace? Let him go. As soon as they threw him out of the palace, David cleaned his face and he began to write this psalm. He began to sing this song. And he said, I'll bless the Lord at all times. So in verse 4, he said, I sought the Lord and he heard me and he delivered me from all my fears. One of the things you need to understand about life is that life can be filled with fears. There are different types of fears. People fear different things. There are some who fear cockroaches, some fear lions, some fear snakes, some fear darkness, some fear um, food that they have not prepared, some fear um, um, heights. They can't stand on a story building. Some fear the sea. When they see the sea, they become so afraid. Some fear men. Some fear women. Some fear so many things. And many times, Bishop would tell me that there are some women, the way they fear men, they shouldn't marry. But they are the ones who even marry and they are happy about marriage. Yet they fear men. They fear men. They won't like to sleep with their husbands. They are just there. They fear men. And they shouldn't have married. 
But then they are the ones who are always running around, you know, seeking somebody to marry. And so there are different kinds of fears. There are different types of fears. So he said, I sought the Lord and he heard me and he delivered me from all my fears. That's fine. He says, they looked to him and they were lightened and their faces were not ashamed. So he says, as they looked to God, they were lightened. That were lightened, it also means that light shone on their faces. Light shone on their path. And they began to see clearly. And their faces were not ashamed. Meaning that anybody who looks to God will never end up in shame. Shame means different things to different people. To the one who is stealing, he feels that when he's caught, he'll be ashamed. To the one who is fornicating, he feels that when he gets pregnant, I mean, he'll, be, he'll feel embarrassed. I mean, shame means different things to different people. But whatever shame means to you, what I came to tell you this morning is that as you look to God, he'll roll away the shame from you. Oh, he'll roll away the shame from you. Shame will never be your portion in the name of Jesus. That's what Psalm 3 verse 3 says, For thou, O Lord, art a shield for me. You are my glory and the lifter up of my head. Verse 6, Psalm 34 verse 6 says, This poor man cried, the Lord heard him and saved him. Out of all his troubles. Another thing that life is filled with is also troubles. The troubles of life, they come to all of us. Men and women alike, children, elderly, different kinds of people. It comes all alike. But it depends on what you do with them. It says, this poor man cried. The Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. If you find yourself in trouble this morning, may the Lord save you out of that trouble. May the Lord save you out of that trouble. May the Lord save you out of that trouble. Seven says, the angel of the Lord encamped round about that fear him and delivered them. So it says that the angel of the Lord, he encamps round about them that fear God and he delivered them. He delivered them from what? From sicknesses, from all manner of evil. So sometimes as you are walking around, what you don't know is that angels have surrounded you. They are around you, they are in front of you, they are to your right, they are to your left, they are behind you and their main job is to deliver you from evil. That word encamp also means that they have come with their tents. They have come with their provisions. They have come with money. So angels can also bring you money. Today may angels bring somebody money here in the name of Jesus. Oh, taste and see. It said, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man. We are in verse 8. Is that not so? Taste and see that the Lord is good. It says God is like soup. If you don't taste it, you will not know how sweet it is. So he said, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusted in him. In other words, as for God, he is there for everybody. Anybody who comes to him will come and taste of his goodness. I pray that you will taste his goodness in the name of Jesus. As you look to him, as you trust him, as you believe him, as you turn to him, may you see that truly the Lord is good in the name of Jesus. Now he says, oh, fear the Lord, ye his saints. For there is no one to them that fear him. It is dangerous to be serving God and lack the fear of God. Without a fear of God, you will just be fornicating by heart. Without a fear of God, you will just be stealing from people. Without a fear of God, we can spoil the house of God. Make it a place where people are not married, but they are getting pregnant all over the place. Where people are not married, they are just aborting babies all over the place. Without the fear of God, we can just be around, doing pack, pack, pack moves, sleeping in people's husbands just to collect money from them. Because there is no fear of God in our house. Without the fear of God, we can go and fornicate Saturday night, Sunday morning, we are in church singing choruses unto God. Because there is no fear. In our hearts. So, without the fear of God, people misbehave. And you see, the thing about this is that sometimes the thing you are running away from, thinking that when you leave it, you will lack. Let's say, for example, you are sleeping with somebody's husband for the man to give you money. You think that if you leave that man, you will lack. It says, there is no one to them that fear him. So, as you fear God, rather, you will see that God will be giving you things you have not even asked him for. The young liars don't lack. And suffer hunger, but they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. It says the young lions, not the old lions. The young lions, because the old lions, they perish for lack of prey. They lack strength to run around. But it says that even the young lions, though they are strong and mighty, it says they lack and they suffer hunger. But they that seek the Lord, it says they shall not want any good thing. May you never be a wanter of good things in the name of Jesus. 
He didn't use the word need any good thing. He says, they shall not want any good thing. 11 says, come ye children, hearken unto me, and I will teach you the fear of the Lord. 12, what man is he that desired life? And loveth many days that he may see good. Keep thy tongue from evil and thy lips from speaking guile. Depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous and his ears are open unto their cry. The face of the Lord is against them that do evil to cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. So he says here that the person who wants to live long should come to God and God will teach him how he will live long. And so this month, I mean, I, that will be my focus, but let's just finish reading the verses. Where are we now? Is it verse, verse 17? It says, the righteous cry, and the Lord hear it, and deliver them out of all their troubles. It says, when righteous people cry, the Lord hears them. Righteous people does not necessarily mean somebody who doesn't sin. But it refers to somebody who has accepted what Jesus did for him on the cross. So it says that when we cry, the Lord will hear us and deliver us from our troubles. Our duty is to cry. His duty is to hear us and to deliver us. So it says the righteous cry, and the Lord hear it, and deliver them out of all their troubles. He said the Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart, and save us such as be of a contrite spirit. If you want God to be visiting you, let your heart be broken before him. If you want God to come to your bedroom, let your heart be broken before him. If you want God to visit you as you are cooking fried rice by the roadside, let your heart be broken before him. Learn to cry. Learn to weep before God in prayer. Anybody who wants the visitation of God must be broken in heart. Then he says in 19, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivered him out of them all. May the Lord deliver somebody out of all his afflictions today. He says he keepeth all his bones. Not one of them is broken. The Lord will keep all your bones. None of you will be broken. I said none of your bones will be broken. You will say amen. I said none of your bones will be broken. In the mighty name of Jesus. He keepeth all his bones and not one is broken. Evil shall slay the wicked. And they that hate the righteous shall be desolate. If somebody hates you, he's in trouble. You become desolate. It says, evil shall slay the wicked. The Lord redeemed the souls of his servants, and none of them that trust in him shall be desolate. Anybody who trusts in God, instead of your things finishing, like the people in the world, as for you, your things will be increasing because you trust in God. Your goods will never finish in your house. Money will never finish in your house. Food will never finish in your house. If you believe, shout a big Amen. My key area of emphasis is going to be from the verse number 12. He says, what man is he that desired life and loveth many days that he may see good? He says, keep thy tongue from evil and thy lips from speaking God. Depart from evil and do good. Then he said, seek peace and pursue it. For the eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous. His ears are open." unto their cry. Then he says, the face of the Lord is against them that do evil, to cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. He says, the righteous cry, the Lord heareth and delivereth them out of all their troubles. So he says that the person who wants to live long, there are things, there are buttons the person must press. And when the person presses those buttons, he says, I'll cause the person to live long. So long life is not a mathematical equation that should confuse those who don't like mathematics. It's a very simple thing. The keys are written in the Word of God. So my subject for this month of November um, is going to be keys for long life. Keys for long life. Keys for long life. Now, let me define my key terms. Keys for long life. Keys for long life. Mary, keys for long life. What are the keys? So let me define my terms. Keys, I'll define keys, and then I'll also define long life. Keys for long life. Keys for long life. What is a key? A key is a means. A key is a means by which you gain an entrance. A, me, a, a key is a means by which you gain an entrance or prevent an entrance. A key is a means by which you gain an entrance 
or prevent an entrance. A key is a means by which you gain an entrance or prevent an entrance. So if I have a key, I can lock the door um, to prevent people from coming in and I can open the door for myself to go out and to come in. So a key is a means of gaining or preventing an entrance. Number two, a key is also a means of possessing. It's a means of possessing. If I have a safe in the house with money hidden in it, if I open the safe, I have access to the money. So a key is a means of possessing or it's also a means of gaining control. It's also a means of gaining control. It's a means of gaining control. The question also then is, what is long life? I'm defining my key term. So a key is a means of gaining an entrance or preventing an entrance. A key is also a means of possessing or it's also a means of gaining control over a place or over a thing. The question also then is, what is long life? Long life is fulfilling the number of days the Lord has given you. Long life is fulfilling the number of days the Lord has given you. From the age of 70 years to the age of 120. From the days of 70 years old to the age of 120. So long life is living, you know, the days that God has given to you to the fullest. That is from the age of 70 to the age of 120. In Genesis chapter 6 verse 3, God said, My spirit shall no longer strive with man, for that he is also flesh. He says, yet his days shall be an 120 years. So God says that our years shall be 120. This was in the days of Noah, just before the flood. Then in Psalm 90, in Psalm 90 verse 10, it says, the days of our years are three score years and ten, meaning 70 years. And if by reason of strength, four score, four score means 80 years, because one score is 20. So four score means 80 years. It says, yet is their strength, labor, and sorrow. So it says that the number of days, this is, this is from David's um, perspective. But in Genesis chapter 6 verse 3, that was from God's perspective. Now, so if every scripture is written by the inspiration of God, and Moses also wrote, or David also wrote, that our, our years are supposed to be 70 years, then we can put the two together. And say that long life is to live between the age, ages of 70 and the ages of 120. It means that if you would die, you should die after 70 years or by 120 years. When you are tired, you say, look, I'm ready to go. I want to go. And then you leave. The choice is yours. I pray that everybody will live long in the name of Jesus. Exodus 23. Exodus 23 verse 25 and 26. Exodus 23, 25 and 26. It says, and ye shall serve the Lord thy God. And he shall bless thy bread and thy water. I will take sickness away from the midst of thee. Then he said, there shall nothing cast a young, nor be barren in thy land. Then he said, the number of thy days I will fulfill. So God says that he wants to fulfill the number of your days. He wants you to live life to the fullest. Receive that grace to live your life to the fullest. As I receive that grace to live your life to the fullest. Receive that grace to live your life to the fullest. In the name of Jesus. So, keys to long life simply just means the means of living up to the age of 120 years. The means how you can live up to the age of 120 years. I prophesy over your life this morning, you shall not die before your time. You shall not die before your time. Sudden death will never be your portion. Premature death will never be your portion. In the name of Jesus, the Lord will keep your bones strong and you'll be strong and healthy all the days of your life. I cancel sudden death from your destiny. I take away sudden death from your family. I take away sudden death from the church. In the name of Jesus, I declare long life is your portion this morning. Receive the grace to live long. 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 I speak over your family, speak over your life, speak over your children, speak over everybody around you. I declare you will not bury your children. You will not bury your husband. You will not bury your wife before the time. In the mighty name of Jesus, long life is your portion. You will not die, but you will live to declare the works of God. If you believe, shout, I believe it. So long life is there for us. 
But before we begin to look at the keys for long life, the psalmist said, these keys are not just for anybody. It says, what man is he that desired life? And loveth many days. So it says, two main conditions are important for somebody to have the keys for long life. It says the first thing about the person is that the person must love long days. The person must love long life. The person must be passionate about long life. The person must have a love for long life. It says, what man is he that desired life and loveth many days? Now, days in the Bible speaks of the days of youth. He speaks of the days of youth where you are still strong and you are still healthy. And so in John chapter 9, John chapter 9, um, the verse number four, I guess, yeah, John chapter nine, verse four, it says, it says, I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh when no man can work. So it says, when he says love many days, it means that love the days where you can labor. Love long life so that you can labor and do all the things you have to do. There are many people who die with unfinished projects, with unfinished things they were supposed to have finished, but they didn't finish them. Some people die. Death, even though it's a divine appointment, everybody will meet an encounter. When it comes earlier than normal, it leads to despair, it leads to this depression, it, it can even scatter a family. Sometimes one person dying can destroy much good. I mean, after my mother died, I've seen, I've seen the death of one. I mean, you can be there. It's not about what you have. But your presence alone can make the family united. But as soon as you are eliminated, the whole family is scatters. And when my mother died, I mean, it looked like she didn't have anything, but whatever. But one key thing she had, which I saw, was the force of gathering. She kept the family together. But since her death, the family is divided. Everybody has taken his way. People are angry with one another. Some say some people are witches. Some say some people, are, some people are wizards. I mean, different kinds of accusations. The whole family is scattered. So death, when it comes at a time when you don't expect it, it can destroy. It can destroy. But for you to have the keys to live long, you must have a love for many days. Receive a love for many days. Receive a love for long life in the name of Jesus. But the key one I want to dwell on this morning is that you must also... So this morning, myself, I'm just talking about the keys to long life. This is just introduction. But you see, the key thing I want you to understand this morning is that before the keys will be delivered to you, you must have a desire to live long. Have a desire to do what? To live long. You must have that strong desire within you that you are not going to die before your time, that you don't want to die before your time. That desire must be strong within you, before the keys can even be effective in your life. Desire. What is the desire? To have a strong feeling for a thing. To desire something is to have a strong feeling for the thing. To have a strong feeling for the thing. So you must have a strong feeling for the thing. To desire something is always to wish strongly to have the thing. To wish that you will have it. To wish that you will have it. Wish that you have it. People, for as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Eat and drink, saith he to thee, but his heart is not with thee. That's Proverbs 23, verse 7. As a man thinketh in his heart. When you start desiring long life, there seems to be a force that is released. That moves you to take steps that will cause you to live long life and to have the long life you desire. That's why Ephesians 3, 20 says, Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power which worketh in us. So thinking, it releases a power inside you. You can determine to how far to the degree to which God must multiply your days. The more you start thinking and dreaming, listen, you cannot arrive at a, de at a destination you don't know. You cannot also arrive at a future you have not seen with your eyes. You cannot get to a place you don't know spiritually. So before you can get there, you must start envisaging it. You must start seeing it. See yourself at the age of 100 years, and, and you have called your children, and you are blessing them. See yourself at the age of 110. See yourself at the age of 115. See yourself at the age of 113. See yourself at the age of 120. See yourself at the age of 80. 
so strong, moving about in the house. As you see it, one day you will get there. I said, as you see, one day you will get there. No man can arrive at a future he cannot see. No man can arrive at a destiny he has not seen. If you are clapping, clap your hands together for the Lord. So before you get there, you must start desiring it. The desire must be strong inside you. It must be strong inside you. So if God will do exceeding abundantly, then see yourself at the age of 80 so that God can make you get to 90. See yourself at the age of 90 so that God can make you get to 110. See yourself at 100 so that God can see you get to at the age of 120. He will do exceeding abundantly above all that you ask on things. If you are thinking 40 years, he will give you 60. If you are thinking maybe 20 years, he will give you 30. But if you are thinking 80, you are thinking 90, you are thinking 100, then God is going to multiply it and do exceeding abundantly above that which you are thinking. Now, in Psalm 91 verse 16, it says, With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. With long life. Now, and I always say from this verse that if he says, I will satisfy you with long life, our levels of satisfaction are different. What one person may eat and say, I am satisfied. Another person may eat and say, I am not satisfied at all. Recently, I heard of a house who can eat six balls of kinky and still ask for more. Six balls of banku, six balls of kinky. And the, the man said to me, that is the minimum, six balls. If, if she hasn't eaten at all, six balls. So I said, what, what is the size? He said, the size doesn't matter. Six balls is what she eats. So there, there, there are degrees of satisfaction. So if God says, I will satisfy you with long life, it means that your mouth must be wide open. You must, be, you, must, you must have a wild desire, wild level of uh, degree of satisfaction so that God can give you. I have prayed that everybody in this church, listening to the sound of my voice today, everybody who crossed the age of 90 years with ease, everybody who crossed the age of 100 years with ease, everybody who crossed the age of 120 with ease, receive that grace from God in the name of Jesus. If you believe, shout a big amen. Recently, I heard a man at the age of 84. He said, I am 84 years young. I have 36 more years to live. You are 20 years. I am 20 years old. Somebody is 84. He said, I'm 20, 84 years young. Perspective. Your perspective, it matters. How you see things, it matters. So your desire must be that you will live long on the face of the earth. And God will give you that desire in the name of Jesus. If you believe, shout a big amen. Now, two things. Two things the psalmist mentions you must desire. He says you must desire long life. To live long, you must desire it. Then number two, he says you must desire prosperity in addition to the long life. That is why I'll spend some time. You must desire prosperity in addition to the long life. It should not be that you are living long, but you have become a problem to your family at the age of 80. But you must prosper even as you are growing older in the things of God. Somebody say amen. amen. I pray that God has prosperity to you in the name of Jesus. As you are growing older, you will keep prospering in the name of Jesus. You will spread abroad to the right, spread abroad to the east, spread abroad everywhere. May you increase on every side. I think it's a good place to clap your hands together for Jesus. So, prosperity. There are four key areas of prosperity you must desire as you are growing old. Somebody say amen. amen. Number one is good health. Good health. It should not be that as you are growing older, then your bones are becoming more tired. You can't lift up your leg. When you are lifting your leg, you shout, Ajay. Everybody is wondering what is happening. When they come to the room, you are just trying to lift your thigh. That's all. But that as you are growing older, you will still be strong. In Deuteronomy 34 verse 7, Deuteronomy 34 verse 7, it says, And Moses was an 120 years old when he died. His eye was not dim, nor his natural force abated. So 
Moses was 120 years old. His eyes could see as that of a young man. And his natural force was not abated. I pray for everybody today that good health will be your portion as you are aging. I pray that as you are growing older, good health will be your portion. Receive that grace from today in the name of Jesus. You will be strong in your bones, strong in your thigh, strong in your hands, strong in your head, strong in your neck, strong in every part of your body. If you believe, shout, I believe. Good health. Good health. His eye did not grow dim. So Moses was not even wearing spectacles. There is nothing wrong with wearing spectacles, but he was not wearing one. He could see from far and from near. He could see. Then his natural force was not abated. You know, one day I'll never forget, we went for a crusade somewhere. We went for the crusade. There was a senior man of God there, about 82 years. First day, second day, third day in the afternoon, I finished the youth empowerment service. And as we're going, the old man, the old minister of God, he approached me and he said, I want prayer. I said, oh, man of God, you brought Christianity into this town. I rather should be asking you for prayer when we are done for the crusade. He said, oh, no, 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 no. I mean, with the testimonies I've heard these two nights, I mean, I, I rather need prayer. I need a miracle. So I said, what miracle do you need? He said, I'm 82. I am very strong, but I, I lack the strength to go long distance. So I said, how do you mean? How do you mean you can't go long distance? Are you an athlete or something? He said, in the night, my wife is lying by me. 82 years old at night, in the night. He said, my wife is lying by me. I want to be able to travel long distance at the age of 82. You, you are 32. You are tired already. I pray that God will give you strength in the name of Jesus. Receive the strength of God in the name of Jesus. If you believe, shout a big amen. Long distance. <laughs> appreciate the word of God. If the hands are yours, clap your hands and appreciate the word of God. I couldn't believe it. At the age of 82 years, he told me his wife is about 52. Because his first wife died. And the second wife is 52. He doesn't want any man to come and take his wife from him. So his strength must be there so that he can travel long at the age of 82. Not 82. 82. Not 62. 82. Strong. Zechariah chapter 8 verse 4. Zechariah chapter 8 verse 4 and 5. It says, There shall yet old men and old women dwell in the streets of Jerusalem. And every man with a staff in their hands for very age. It says, old men and women shall dwell in the streets of Jerusalem. Each of them with a staff in their hands. Not because their waist is hurting, but just because they are old and they are walking around. You know, when people grow older, there is this walking stick they used to walk around. It's not because they, they are using it to support themselves, but it's just nice. As an old man, you are holding a stick and you are coming. So if somebody wants to misbehave, you hit the waist of the person. With the, with the rod. It says that it shall come to pass that, this, that's here the Lord of hosts, I mean, concerning that. It says that the shayat old men and old women dwell in the streets of Jerusalem. Every one of them with a staff in their hands for very age. I prophesy also that in the in New Life Pentecostal Church, there shall be old men and old women. I said, there shall be old women and old women. If you believe, shout a big amen. Then he says, in the streets of the city shall there be boys and girls playing the rock. So he says that people shall be playing in the streets of the city. Young people, boys and girls, they'll be playing around. So when you enter an area where people are playing football, they are playing ampe, it tells you that that area is alive, beaming with life. And he says that when God is in a place, people will be strong and healthy. As the elderly women, elderly women, elderly men are walking around in strength. He says the younger ones too will be walking around in strength. Receive strength from the Lord in the name of Jesus. Receive strength from the Lord in the name of Jesus. Wave your neighbor and tell your neighbor these things are your portion. Today I roll away every form of disease. That causes people to feel like they have to die. I roll it away in the name of Jesus. I roll it away in the name of Jesus. I roll it away in the name of Jesus. There are some diseases when they come, you start thinking about death. In Luke 7, 
1 and 2, he says, Now when he had ended all his sayings in the audience of the people, he entered into Capernaum. And a certain centurion servant, who was dear unto him, was sick and ready to die. Sickness can make you think that you are about to die. That is why good health must come. That is why good health must be your portion. So that you will look at the future with hope. Any form of sickness inside your body, I curse it to finish in the name of Jesus. I curse it to die in the name of Jesus. Any sickness in your family, I curse it to die in the name of Jesus. Receive healing in your body now. Receive healing for your family now. Receive healing for your house now. Receive healing in the name of Jesus. I declare there shall be no sick person amongst us. Receive the healing river of God this morning. In the mighty name of Jesus. If you believe, shout a big amen. So long life must not walk in isolation. Not that as you are growing older. At the point then all your teeth are finished in your mouth. Your cheeks, they, they, they give you by force dimples inside. When you are coming, then everybody is afraid of you because as you are growing older, you look horrible. No. I wonder why they never say, they never catch young girls and young boys and macho men as witches, but only old men and old women. Because, of their, because they are so weak, they can't do anything. But that will not be your story. You will be strong and healthy. I said you will be strong and healthy. I said you will be strong and healthy. Receive that grace from God in the name of Jesus. Number two. Number two. Another thing you need to desire, in addition to long life, is to prosper in wealth. Prosper in wealth. Health, they say, is wealth. Health, they say, is wealth. But without wealth, your health can also be challenged. Health, they say, is wealth. But without wealth, your health can be challenged. If you are not eating well, and you are eating from the gutter, your health can be challenged. And so, as much as you have to be strong, you also need to have money in your hands to be able to take care of yourself, to eat well, dress well, take care of your family, and do whatever you can be able to do. In Genesis chapter 24, verse 1, Genesis 24, verse 1, it says, And Abraham was old and well stricken in age. And the Lord had blessed Abraham in all things. So Abraham in his old age, he didn't like anything. He had everything. If you talk about car, he had. If you talk about house, he had. If you talk about land, he had. If you talk about uh, skyscraper, he had. Maybe private jet, he had. Anything you want to talk about. Abraham had everything. So he says, God had blessed Abraham in all things. This is his servant describing him in uh, verse 35. He says, and the Lord has blessed my master greatly, and he has become great. And he had given him flocks and heads and silver and gold and men servants and maid servants and camels and asses. So he said, Abraham, my master, he has been blessed. He has flocks. He has heads. He has silver and gold. Talking about money. He says, silver, he has. Gold, he has. He says, men servants, plenty. Maid servants, many. Camels, four by fours, different kinds of cars. He can use to go anywhere. He had. Asses, he had. Different kinds of things. And Sarah, my master's wife, Bear him a son, bear my master a son, when she was old. And unto him hath he given all things. The reason why you must also prosper as you are growing old is so that you can be a blessing to your children. You see, there is nothing wrong with growing old and your children are giving you money and taking care of you. But you see, the best is that as you are even older, you are rather still blessing your children. When they come to your house with things, you tell them, we'll carry the things away. I don't need anything. I have more than enough. And you rather give them money again that they should carry the money away. That's another level of prosperity altogether. But in Africa, it's like the reverse is true. We tell our children, I'm looking after you so that you come and look after me one day. I'm looking after you so that you come and look after me one day. But in the Bible, when the people were about to die, they blessed their children. 
and bless their children's children and bless their children's children's children that the generations after them will continue in the blessing. So your desire must be that as you are growing older, you will have lands, you will have houses, you will have properties that you can give to your children. Some people die and instead of leaving an inheritance for their children, they leave debt for their children to pay. They take $1,000. Then they ask how many children are they? They said 10. Everybody, $3,000. Aside the money they have to use to bury the man. It will never be your portion. I said it will never be your portion. I said it will never be your portion. So this is Abraham's servant boasting to the girl, I mean, Rebecca, whom Isaac was about to marry. He said, that's my master. He's blessed. And he has flocks, he has heads, he has silver, he has gold, he has men servants, he has maid servants, he has camels, he has asses. And this man who you are going to marry, my master has given everything to him. So you are blessed. Rebecca started smiling. Smiling inside. She didn't show it outside, but she was smiling inside. Because from that day that she gets married, everything is under her feet. Who doesn't like good things? Lift up your right hand today. Receive the blessings of the Lord. Receive wealth from the Lord. Receive the grace of God to be wealthy upon the face of the earth. Receive the grace of the Lord to be an owner of things. To be a blessing to your generation. If you believe, shout a big amen. Not that when we are growing older, rather, then we are taking things from our children. No, 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 no. Your child gives birth. You are going to give it, visit the child. Then you go and stay there forever. When they say, he say, you look after your child for the child to come and look after you. There's nothing wrong. But the better one is that you have your own house. As your child is growing, you build a house for your child also. Tell the child, take the house. You give the child a car. You give the child money. You give the child a bank account to start life with. You are making the child start life 100 times above where you started from. In Africa, we want our children to start even lower than we started. One day I was, with, I was traveling with a man of God. We were sitting in the car. We were going to Wonder uh, Ho. I think we are either going from Accra to Ho or from Ho to Akachi or something. And as we were in the car, his phone uh, 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 beeped. Beep, 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 beep. And he was smiling. So as I was smiling, I asked sheepishly. I said, oh. Why are you smiling? He said, oh, my father just sent me money. And I said, oh, but your father is dead. He said, oh, yeah, my father is dead. But every month, there are 13 of us. But he pays all of us in dollars. I said, wow, I wish he was my father. <laughs> Forgive. <laughs> he said, every month, he pays them dollars. He said, when he died, every, every of the 13 children, everybody received their house in Ghana and outside Ghana. Wow. Look at your neighbor and ask your neighbor, you two, what will you leave behind when you're about to go? What will you be leaving behind? Some people, when their children are living in their hall and chamber, they will come and tell them, look, where it has got into, you two, go and be on your own. Let me hide this uh, hall and chamber and be getting something small to be chopping. No. But not in the days of the Bible. In the days of the Bible, Look, when they prosper, they give everything that God had given to them, to their children. So, Proverbs 13, Proverbs 13, verse 22, it says, A good man liveth an inheritance for his children's children, and the wealth of the sinner is laid out for the child. So, it says, a good man, he lives an inheritance for his children's children. So, it should not be that when you are growing older, you don't have anything to give to anybody, but rather you should be blessing other people. Another man of God, Kenneth Hagin, he was at the age of 83 when I was watching this his video. He said, at the age of 83, he just finished buying a house for all of his grandchildren. Meaning that the children, they have houses, all the grandchildren, small, 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 he bought a house for them. And he has created an account for all the four of them. He has put $25,000 in their account. That by the time they get to the age of going to the university, that money will take care of them. That $25,000... By the time, this is about 20 years later. That's when the children were needed. About 20 years later, that money would have been hundreds of thousands of dollars. In Africa, we have no such plans. In Africa, we have no such plans. It's me and my life and my life. So your money is hidden in some bank account. Nobody's a signatory to it. Even your mobile money pin, nobody knows it. 
I mean, your, your phone. I mean, you have things written on it, hidden, the pin. I mean, it's, it, there's a pin on it. What's up? There is a pin on it. Everything, there's a pin on it. Meanwhile, you don't know the day you will die. And when you die, you have money in your mobile money account, but nobody can take it. You have money in your bank account, but nobody can take it. You have money hidden somewhere, an investment account, but nobody can take it. What kind of prosperity is this one? We must follow the example of the people in the Bible. Abraham handed over the, everything over to his children before he died. Not at the time of his death. Because at that time, there was no lawyer. You gave it to them whilst you are alive. You told them where you wanted them to bury you whilst you are still alive. I pray that everybody hearing me today, wealth will be your portion. I pray that wealth will be your portion. That you will give to your children and to your children's children. Receive that grace from God in the name of Jesus. If you believe, shout a big amen. Clap your hands together for Jesus today. Number two, or number three. Another area where you need to desire to prosper, in addition to old age, is to prosper spiritually, bearing fruit. Prosper where? Spiritually, bearing fruit. And to bear fruit, it means that you must remain in Christ to the days of your life. Till the days of your life, you must remain in Christ. In John chapter 5, 15 verse 5, John 15 verse 5, Jesus said, I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in, in me, me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, ye can do nothing. So as you are growing older, you must remain connected to God to still bring forth fruit. In Psalm 92, verse 13 and 14, Psalm 92, verse 13 and 14, it says, those that be planted in the house of the Lord, they shall flourish in the courts of our God. They shall still bring forth fruit in old age. They shall be fat and flourishing. Listen, if you want to live long, you must also desire that as you are growing older, you are still bearing fruit. You are still bearing fruit. You are still bearing fruit. Bishop is almost 78 years. He is in uh, Wokadeji today, preaching the gospel, bearing fruit. I asked him, why are you going there? He said, because of the COVID, some people have, have stopped going to church. So I'm going there to go and empower them. And he is right there, preaching, strengthening them. Why wouldn't he still be growing older and older? Because in his old age, he is still bearing fruit. So the man who wants to live long must also desire that as he is growing older, he will be bearing fruit spiritually spiritually raising more people raising more christians raising more pastors raising more disciples i mean helping the house of god following the example of peter's mother-in-law in matthew chapter 8 verse 14 and 15 it says when jesus was coming to peter's house he saw his wife's mother laid and sick of a fever and he touched her hand and the fever left her and she arose and ministered unto them. She must have been in her old age. Because she was Peter's mother-in-law. Peter's wife's mother. So if they were at the age of 30. And she was 30 when she gave birth to um, Peter's wife. Then that means she should have been around 60 years. At the age of 60, she was still cooking. Taking care of the men of God. So even as you are growing older, you must still be doing the things you used to do. You must be doing them. Ministering to the servants of God. Raising disciples. Raising pastors. Preaching to pastors. My old age dream is to be on a big prayer camp. Big prayer camp. We are calling maybe Canaan City. Or whatever city. Zion City. Or is it the city of Zion or something like that? You know? And, and we are there. Plenty. And there, there, there is a, a, a Bible school. A training center. Where I wake up in the morning at the age of 90. And I come and bless the people. And empower them. And lay hands on all of them. That is if Jesus tarries. If Jesus tarries. If Jesus tarries. But at the age of 90. I see myself laying hands on all these young men. And telling them you will go. You will go. You will do well. And sending them all over to the world. To, the, to Europe. To Asia. To different places. To work for God. What are you thinking about? When I'm 19, I want to be in Hawaii. And when I'm in Hawaii, my wife will be sitting by me and we shall be drinking from coconut water. Listen. <laughs> that, that, that dream is also good. But you see, your main desire must be that you'll be bearing fruit. As you bear fruit, the Lord will empower you. 
the Lord is strengthening you. Is somebody understand what I'm saying at all? Sometimes as, as I'm going to somewhere, you are going to preach somewhere and they put you, you think maybe they are going to put you somewhere, they're going to put you in some very nice hotel. I mean, and all that. It's a nice place. I mean, but as you are there, you know, you are not there to enjoy the place, but you are there to be an empowerment to the people there. It's just, so, don't think about just enjoying, but think about bearing fruit. Think about bearing fruit. Think about winning souls. Think about helping somebody. Think about empowering somebody. Is somebody in the church this morning? Sister Rejoice, as she's growing older, must be raising more people. And many mothers, encourage your children to work for God. Encourage your children to work for God. Listen, when Jesus came to the house of Zebedee to come and take Zebedee's two sons, um, um, James and John, to work for, for him, he said to him, Jesus said to the mother and to the father, he said, we have seen that you, the father and the mother, this was in the, when Jesus walked the earth, written by a rejoiner, he said, we have seen that you have had a desire for God for all these years. That's why I'm coming for your children to come and work for me. It's an honor for your child to be working for God. Don't discourage your child from working for God. Don't tell your child working for God is difficult. Run away from it. Ah, it's difficult. Demons will be chasing you. You, as you are there, has demon been chasing you. Have you seen any demon chasing you before? Whether you work for God or you don't work for God, whether demons will chase you or not, they will chase you. If they have to chase you, they will chase you. But rather, what I found is that as you are rather working for God, some demons, they can never come closer to you. They can never. They may try, but they will never come closer to you. At all. I pray for somebody today that as you are growing older, may your children be pushed into the work of God. May you be happy when your child becomes a pastor. May you be happy when your child becomes a bishop. When your child becomes a whatever. May you be happy and push them into the, into the things of God. Don't let your children be into um, different kinds of things and just watching movies and just walking around. They are not involved in the work of God. Listen, you are not bearing fruit with them. Use your children to bear fruit. Use them. If you don't have even one disciple, push your children into the hands, into the work of God. Let them join the choir. Let them join the action department. Let them join media team. Let them join evangelism. Let them rise and become something in the house of God. As you do that, God will keep you living long because he sees that you are bearing fruit. If you are clapping, clap well. Finally, you must desire to prosper in your soul. Prosper where? In your soul. Third John 2. Third John 2 says, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in hell, even as thy soul prosper. Even as thy soul prosper. Desire that as you are growing wild, as you are growing older, you'll be growing in the knowledge of God. Second Peter 3 18. It says, but grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To him be glory, both now and forever. Amen. Desire that as you are growing older, you can sit your children down and talk to them and tell them that I have been to heaven before three times. I have been to heaven before four times. And tell your children, I, I know God. I know God. I, I know that as for God, this is it. You know, when my grandmother was about to die, my grandmother was 86 when she died. And a week before she died, I had just gone to the village just to do a crusade or thing, I think, in one of the towns. And I passed by and blessed there. So when I blessed She knew God for herself. Do you also know God for yourself? 
If you don't know God, your desire must be that shall grow older. You must also know God. Because see, the more you know God, the more stable you become and you can cause everybody around you to also be very stable. When you know God, you don't fear anything. Because you know him. That your life is in his hands. It is not in the hands of anybody. It's in the hand of God. And so as you are growing older, you must grow in knowledge of God. And one prayer we need to pray is to pray that we increase in the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of God. Receive that spirit today in the name of Jesus. I said receive that spirit today in the name of Jesus. Receive that spirit today in the name of Jesus. Ephesians 1, 15 to 17, my last scripture. Ephesians 1, 15 to 17, it says, Wherefore I also, since I heard of your faith and your love towards the saints, since not to give thanks for you and to make mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened. The more you know God, the more you know God, the more you know God, you know, the more you get to understand that it is by the spirit of revelation. If God doesn't reveal God to you, you'll read your Bible and you'll never understand it. Many people read John, they don't understand it. But with the spirit of revelation, as you read, you will understand it. You will read very difficult passages in the Bible and be able to explain it. I pray that that spirit will be your portion in the name of Jesus. May we grow in the knowledge of God. Not in the knowledge of Apisco, your boyfriend. Not in the knowledge of another boy or another girl, but in the knowledge of God. I'm preaching. To build this desire, to build this desire, as I close, one thing I want you to do is that you must be willing, be willing, be willing, be willing to live long. Be willing to live long. You know, my mother, at the age of 72, so when she was 71, she entered into um, coma and all that, and she came out. When she came out, she was strong, healthy, eating, moving about, but she started saying that she wants to go. She's tired. She doesn't see what she's doing here. She wants to go. Now, as she kept saying that, eventually, that was what happened. She just left like that because God cannot go beyond what you will or what you desire. And so even as you are talking about desiring that you will live long, you see, one good thing is that you must be willing. It must be from your heart that I want to live long. As our 119 says, if ye be willing and obedient, ye shall eat the good of the land. So there is a good in God that you live long. But if you are not willing, you will not have that good. So you must be willing in your heart that you will live long. Have that will inside you that you are going to live long. In Jesus' mighty name. Some of us are preaching as if you don't understand the message. Hallelujah. Be willing inside your heart. Be willing. Have that desire within you so strong. And, and tell yourself all the time that I'm going to live long. Lift up your right hand and declare after me. I will live long. I cannot die before my time. I will never die before my time. I will fulfill my days. I will fulfill all my days. In the name of Jesus. And the Lord will fulfill all my days. In the name of Jesus. I, I declare sudden death is out of my house. Sudden death is out of my house. Premature death is out of my house. Premature death is out of my church. In the name of Jesus, I will live long. I will live long. I will live long. Receive that grace from God today in the name of Jesus. Stand to your feet and let's pray. Wow. Wave your neighbor and tell your neighbor... You don't have permission to die before your time. Let's be willing. Let's be willing. The other keys I'll also add to those who read the devotional, the other keys, two other keys I'll add to it. But to have that desire, be willing. Somebody say amen. amen. Lift up your hands. And now may the Almighty God bless and keep you. The Lord let His grace be strong upon your life. This week, may God cause His face to shine upon you give you peace on every side. May the Lord smile on you. Smile on your family. Smile on your house. In the name of Jesus. Go in the peace of the Lord, knowing that faithful is he who called you, who also will do it in your life. 
in Jesus' name. Amen.